All right. So as I go through here, I'm going to explain uh, the environment that you're seeing. We're going to start off at the dashboard here. And so what this is going to show you, if you remember from the previous screen, one node is 12 cores, 48 gigs, and, and 2 terabytes of storage. So as we look on the right side here, you're going to see that this is a single node. With, every, with the exception of storage, which appears to be overstated, because it is, currently data redundancy is turned off uh, in our demo environment. Normally, it's just going to say 1.8 terabytes here. And so you'll see just the, the usable space that you have. We can see the 2 gigabits worth of bandwidth. And of course, we see uh, everybody's eye is drawn to the red you know, information over here. The high availability is turned off. So what that means is to have high availability on, you have to have a grid's worth of extra resources, a whole extra node, so that you could do N plus 1 failover. So what we typically recommend for production environments is that you buy a protect stack. All that is is a node that is specifically designated as a failover node. So that if you had a node failover, you would not experience downtime, it would fail over to that. Okay. So um, currently, because I have a single node, it's turned off. And if you were to actually over-provision and have too much human resources, it automatically turns it on. You don't have to have the protect stack to have uh, N plus 1 failover. The environment's very intelligent and will automatically flip it on if you, uh, if you have those resources available. Now, it will also let you eat into those resources. So it's important that you watch your available resources and make sure that high availability stays on. And then if you need additional nodes, that you bring them online. And that can be done very quickly just by uh, processing a, an upgrade request. And, and these are physical resources? Physical resources, yep. System uptime, applications that are running. Applications are a collection of VMs. We also call those canvases or environments. And you'll see it on the next screen. We're going to show you uh, exactly what those environments look like. Um, uptime, that's been since uh, this uh, grid has been rebooted. Uh, last time it was rebooted, we uh, did some rebuilding and uh, reprovisioning of resources. System status is currently running. You could actually have everything shut down and still be able to log into the management console. The version of AppLogic, uh, the newer instances, you're actually going to see 3.5 on here and eventually 3.7. Right now we're running 3.1 in the demo environment. And where it says Sales 2 here, that's where it's going to say Callahan Automotive. And so when a customer signs up for a grid, or it can say whatever you'd like, um, but it's going to say the, the actual name of the customer here. In this case, it's just a demo grid. Now, <coughs> everything that you're seeing today, this is a live environment. If, if I got a big order today, they could actually come take this server away from me and give it to somebody else. Okay, so this is not anything special. This isn't a, you know, a simulated environment. This is the real thing. So we have the ability to go in here and play and test and do all kinds of stuff. In the middle section here, we've got system administrator messages. You can see when people get locked out or when people try and sign in when they're not supposed to, or you can see last time the grid was restarted, which that message is actually uh, was up here and has cleared off after 90 days. Uh, IP ranges, uh, we have blocks of IPs that are available. We can get contiguous blocks if you need them. Two IPs are included with each node. Um, and here we have four. Uh, they're typically five bucks a piece if you need to add, to add additional IP addresses. NetMask and Gateway are contained here. Those are standard uh, uh, values for this environment. And the DNS servers, these are actually Google's DNS servers that we have here in the middle section. And if you want to change that and update it to something else, we can specify different DNS servers. So if I want to add more physical resources, what, is there a special process for that, or does it automatically allocate those resources when I say I want them? So the, the standard process for getting a grid up and running, let's say you said, you know, this sounds great, it's awesome, awesome demo, you're awesome, let's get signed up. It takes 24 to 48 hours to get a grid assigned to you. And then if you need to add additional resources, it's the same 24 to 48 hours. You basically tell us, hey, I need it. And they're going to go in, our ops team is going to find an available server, find one that's in the data center that you need, and then it's going to add it to your, your pool of resources. So it does happen very quickly um, in terms of you know, getting things done in the, in the cloud space. 24 to 48 hours is, is very fast. When you're talking physical dedicated resources, I mean, it, it does require a little bit of extra effort. So. All right. So the last thing that we typically show is you heard me describe you know, public cloud as operating system as a service because you get root access. Well, here if we take a look, this grid shell that you see you know, in the background that I just clicked on, this is hypervisor level access. So this is hypervisor as a service. So we're one level higher. So we have the ability to bring in ISOs. We have the ability to bring in uh, OVF files. And when we do that, we can actually um, you know, import images directly in here, install different OSs. Some that were it was originally designed for, and some maybe that it wasn't. 
Um, you can start and stop different environments. You can restart them. You can reprovision new environments. You can create users. You can control access. You can, uh, you know, look at logging. You can. There, there's a, you know, a hundred different things that you can do for, uh, do in here. Uh, in addition, this establishes the basis for APIs. If you want to set up a web front end that allows you to provision new servers and, and create things, you can use the APIs to make those calls directly into the environment through the command line interface here. So. This is, you know, it's something important to take notice of here, um, is hypervisor level access, which you don't get a lot of places. 